Well, hello, my friends. John here. This is the Basic Expert. Uh, welcome to my channel. If you're a first-time viewer, I'm going over uh, Classic Traveler, which is from well, it's an old game. I'm using the Facsimile Edition, which is from 1981. It's like compiled of, of a couple different things with Arata and stuff like that. The, the edition that came out in 1981, but Classic Traveler has been around since '77. So we're going through an old game. I'm kind of, if, if you've missed it, please go back. I have a whole playlist about Classic Traveler where I go through character creation, person-on-person uh, -person combat, and we're in starships right now. And particularly, we're in design and construction. If you are a longtime viewer of the channel, I apologize that this video didn't come out on Monday. and It's coming out on Wednesday. Been super busy with... Uh, uh, freelance work and everything and which is a good thing you know I'm happy to have all this work come my way but man uh, freelancing with keeping up with the channel and chasing after a two-year-old and being able to spend time with family with my wife and everything it's just been been hard this summer and we're trying to like really maximize the summer here too my wife is a private school teacher so um, you know She's going back to school soon, going back to work soon off of summer break. And so we're these last few days have just been, what are all the things we didn't get to do? Let's try and do them. So apologies for that. Uh, it wasn't intentional. Um, if you like what I do, please consider checking out my subscribe star. Uh, I post an adventure a month for people supporting at $3 or more. And at a dollar and up, you get a dungeon map a week, which I still need to post the one for this week. And I'll probably make a few extra ones today, we'll see, uh, to cover the few weeks to come. I really just need to get a head start on, on some of my work, as well as videos, probably, too. Just, again, hard to juggle all this stuff and, and uh, uh, have time for family and mental health as well. So, uh, But please like, subscribe, share these videos. It means a lot to me. I've reached 1,000 subs, and I'm so incredibly grateful to everyone that's helped me reach this milestone. It means so much to me. You guys are awesome. Uh, the I didn't think this channel would really get this big or this far, and um, or or to this point. I just sort of like I'm gonna go out there and state my opinion on role playing games and call it a day. And uh, so far, that's worked out well, and uh, I've really enjoyed doing that. So. With all that out of the way, let's talk about Classic Traveler and in particular design and construction of, of starships. So the cool thing about Classic Traveler is it gives you some rules here uh, for designing and constructing your own starships. And this is really good for me because I'm learning a lot as I go through these videos. Uh, I've read this the, the rule book probably two or three times, but every time I go back I learn something new because Coming from the modern role-playing game perspective, uh, there's a lot of things that just kind of the first two, one or two read-throughs just go over my head because so much of this, Mark Miller has, has specified this, was influenced by uh, OD&D that came in the three books in a box. That's why there was three books. The facsimile edition is those three books combined into one giant book. But, uh, the, you know, there's a lot of things from my modern... I'm an OSR guy to the core now. I don't play 5e or any real modern games too often anymore. Um, no, I don't play 5e at all anymore, and I don't play too many other modern role-playing games uh, that are not either retro clones or just older versions of D&D themselves. And I love coming back to these older editions and uh, going over them, and especially in Traveler. You know, uh, Classic Traveler is one of those games that there's a reason why it, it's so well-loved and well-regarded and I, I don't want to say that Classic Traveler is perfect. There's some things I don't like about it uh, in the, as the rules is written. There's some things that I would change. I don't particularly like range bands for man-on-man -man combat, but there's a lot of stuff that is just, man, they knew what they were doing back then. So let's get into design and construction. So the rules here say uh, starships are constructed and sold at shipyards throughout the galaxy. Any Class A starport has a shipyard which can build any kind of ship, including a starship with jump drives. Any Class B starport can build a small can build a small craft and ships which do not have jump drives. So jump drives are going to be uh, ships that are allow you to do interstellar travel. Uh, ships without jump drives are more just for like planetary protection, that sort of stuff. The military uh, 
procures vessels through these yards. Corporations buy their commercial vessels from these shipyards, and private individuals can purchase starships that they have designed through them as well. The major restriction on the purchase, purchase of ships is money. So really the way that design and construction is going to work is that you are given this size hole in tons is going to equal X amount per ton is going to X equal X amount of dollars. So if you have a play group that's like, we we got some money or, or we're, we're able to get financing in the game, uh, let's build a starship. There, These rules here are like, okay, well, if you want this size ship, it's going to cost you this amount of money. If you want this kind of drive, it's going to cost you this amount of money. Uh, so that's that's sort of the the thinking behind a lot of what's going on here with how these rules are are done uh so the main resource you're using is credits money and you're going to need to procure financing in order to fund the construction of either a custom ship or one of the standard designs that uh are available to the players within these three books so ship design most vessels are constructed from standard design plans, which use time-tested designs and combinations of features. Shipyards work from these plans, which cover every detail of construction and assembly. Naval architecture. Small design corporations can produce plans for any vessel type once given the details of what is desired. So again, you can you can give uh, designers in the game, designers in the game, uh, the players can, what kind of ship they want, and the designers can design the ship for them. Design procedure, procedure is followed to determine what is available and allowed, and the results are presented to the naval architect firm. They produce a detailed set of design plans in about four weeks, for a price of 1% of the final ship cost. They can be hurried to finish the four week, uh, they can be hurried to finish the job in two weeks if paid 1.5% of the ship's cost. Once design, uh, once design plans are received, the shipyard may be commissioned to produce the desired, the vessel desired. So with this, you're probably going to want to have your players sort of say like, what is your wish list of what your ship would be? And you're going to use these rules to again, determine, can you afford it? So you have standard designs, which are cheaper than a custom design ship, because these are ships that are like tried and true as, as the rules stated that any uh, shipyard can produce. They have already document, uh, you know, uh, blueprints for how these ships are designed. Uh, we know these work. They are good at what they do, and so a lot of players will probably go for these kinds of standard design ships. So there are a number of standard design plans available. They have been in use for a long time and are available for a nominal fee, right at 1,000 for the set. Standard Starship plans are available in a 100-ton Scout Courier. That's like Star Destroyer triangle-looking ship. 2-ton Free Trader, 2-ton Yacht, 200-ton uh, yacht, 400-ton subsidized merchant, 600-ton subsidized liner, 800-ton mercenary cruiser, and 400-ton patrol cruiser. Standard plans are also available for the following small craft, 20-ton launch, 30-ton ship's boat, 30-ton slow boat, 40-ton uh, pinace. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that properly. Uh, you can rip me in the comments if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly. Uh, I'm, I'm ignorant on English, so... <laughs> 40-ton slow pinace, 50-ton cutter, 95-ton shuttle, and 10-ton fighter. Uh, other standard plants may be available at various localities. Standard designs are easier to produce. Their prices reflect a 10%. That's a lot of money when you're getting into uh, uh, MCRs, which is uh, millions of credits. 10% uh, reduction in normal pricing. The details of the standard designs are shown at the end of this chapter. Standard design vessels are often available uh, used 10 to 40 years old at reductions in price ranging from 10% to 40% as indicated by the referee so you can get an older ship a used ship you know oftentimes like uh, it's like buying a car buying a used car is a lot cheaper than buying a brand new one um, might come with some uh, mechanical issues that you need to fix it down the line that are worn down but uh, if you are in a pinch and you need a, sh a ship and you can't afford a brand new one Buying a 20-year-old ship that's used is, is maybe a good idea. So construction times. Time required for building any vessel depends primarily on the hull. The drive potential table indicates construction time for each tonnage of hull. Any hull over the indicated tonnage requires the next higher construction time. Standard holes table gives shorter construction times for those holes. Hulls, they are more familiar to the shipyard and easier to build. Costs and payment. So this is where it will probably be more... Uh, what the characters are actually interested in. 
A shipyard will insist upon a 20% down payment with the order of order for the vessel, as well as requiring a demonstration that proper financing is available to cover the balance when due. So you're gonna want to. It's like buying a house. You're gonna want to buy. You're gonna you're gonna want to have a down payment. Big down. Pay, bigger the down payment, the better. The the less financing you're gonna need. And uh, it doesn't state here, but I know later in the text that it specifies that with the bank, you are going to have to prove that you have a business plan, or the bank's not going to lend you money. So what are you going to do with your ship? Are you going to engage in some trade? Or do you have a trade route? Do you have clients lined up? You need to present a business plan to uh, the bank in order to finance your ship. So those are all things to consider. Or you can lie and you know you get the ship and then go pirate and you don't have to pay anyone back. But you will be wanted. <laughs> there, that will all that will happen. But that could be a fun inv adventure too. So. Uh, re required starship components. So these are things that your starship are going to is going to need in order to function. You're going to need a hull. Hulls are identified by their mass displacement and expressed in tons. As a rough guide, one ton equals 14 cubic meters, the volume of one ton of liquid hydrogen. When hulls hulls are constructed, they are divided into an engineering section for the drives, the main compartment for everything else. All drives and power plants must be located in the engineering section. And only drives and power plants may be placed in that section. All the ship components, including fuel, cargo, hold, uh, living space, and computer, must be located in the main compartment. The standard hulls table shows six standard hulls, which are available at reduced prices and construction times. Any other hull must be produced on a custom basis at a cost of MCR 0.01, so that's millions of credits uh, per ton. Minimum price of MCR 20. So. You want a custom ship, it's, it's going to be expensive. Uh, construction or build times for custom holes are shown in the last column of the drive potential table. Holes vary in the requirements for drives and power plants based on tonnage. Any specific drive will be less efficient as the tonnage it must drive increases. The drive potential table lists 24 standard, standard drive types identified by letters A through Z, omitting I and O to avoid confusion. Also listed are various tonnage levels for holes. Any tonnage which exceeds the listed level should be read to th at the next higher level. Correlating hole size with drive letter indicates drive potential. For maneuver drives, this potential is the G's acceleration available. For jump drives, the potential is jump number, JN, or jump range in parsecs. For power plants, it is a power plant rating, PN. For example, a 200 ton hole equipped with a maneuver drive A can produce 1G acceleration, an 800 ton 800 ton hull equipped with jump drive K can produce two jump, uh, jump two. Um, so, well, let's uh, let's go down to the the tables here. Um, see what they're talking about because they're they're he's referencing these tables a lot. So uh, you have here you go standard hulls that you can use. Uh, you have what is going to be the main area and drives, uh, where, where drives and engineering needs to go, the cost and the time. Uh, the holes listed above are standard sizes readily available at the reduced prices or times shown. All others must be custom produced at uh, MCR 0.1 per ton. So you can pick one of these and uh, you're not gonna run into the issue. It's gonna be more expensive if you are looking for a custom size hole. Like what I would interpret that in, or interpret that as, is I want a 250 ton hull. I want a 275 ton hull. I want a 300 ton hull. Uh, it, it's going to be a, a custom sort of thing. We got our uh, jump drives here, uh, power plants, maneuvers, jump drives, uh, mass, credit, uh, and then again, as you can see, I and O are omitted to uh, avoid confusion, and you can see uh, the numbers here was what it was talking about. So a 200 uh, ton uh, with an A jump drive is going to be able to do jump one, uh, one G. And you can see how the, it kind of staggers this way. So this is, this is useful here. And then you got your build times here on the side. So uh, this is gonna take uh, 12, 12 uh, weeks, I believe. Let's see. 
Comparing hole tonnage to drive letter indicates performance of the drive in that sized hole. Use next larger size hole for uh, intermediate tonnages. Performance is G's acceleration for maneuver drives, jump number for jump drives, and power plant number for power plant. Uh, it doesn't say, I'm gonna assume this is weeks. This is number of weeks. Like if you're, if you're wanted a 100 ton, 100 ton ship with a jump drive A and maneuver drive A, uh, power plant type A, it's going to take uh, 10 weeks for each of those is how I would interpret that. Um, so that's, that's how I would interpret it. Obviously I might be wrong and I'm not saying I'm hundred percent right. That's just how I would interpret it. So let's go down to, uh, where did we leave off at? Engineering section. Drives are installed in the engineering section. A non-starship must have a maneuver drive and power plant. A starship must have a jump drive and a power plant. Maneuver drive may also be installed, but is not required. In all cases, the power plant letter must equal or exceed either the maneuver drive letter or the jump drive letter, whichever is higher. Prices and masses of drives and power plants are described in the drives and power plant table. Total tonnage may not exceed the tonnage of the engineering section of the vessel. So you can't put in a drive that won't fit in the engineering section. You can't put in equipment that's just not going to fit there. It's important to note that from the drive potential table that some drives will not produce results in some tonnages of holes as indicated by dash instead of a number. That's what we saw below there. On the table, the drives and power plants table also indicates that some drives will not fit into some holes. During the design process, it may also turn out that after fitting a set of drives and power plant into a hole, there may be insufficient tonnage remaining for fuel, basic controls, or life support. You're going to want to plan your ship out. Drive ratings greater than 6 are not available from the equipment shown here. So then we get into the main compartment. The ship's main compartment contains all non-drive features of the ship, including the bridge, ship's computer, the staterooms, the low passage berths, the cargo hold, fuel tanks, uh, armament, and other items. Bridge, very important. All ships must allocate 2% of their tonnage, minimum 20 tons, to basic controls, communications equipment, avionics, scanner, scanners, detectors, sensors, and other equipment for proper operation of the ship. The cost for the bridge is... MCR point, uh, 0.5 per 100 tons of ship. Basic controls do not include the ship's computer, which is installed adjacent to the bridge. The computer is identified by its model number. Uh, the computer table indicates details of price, tonnage capacity, and tech level available. In general, larger computers are more advantageous in combat situations. In addition, the model number indicates the highest level of jump which can be achieved by the ships. For example, a ship must have a Model 4 computer. I love the little typo there before it can perform jump four, in addition to the proper size jump drive. So you can read more about computers here. I'm not gonna read all of this. Uh, computers are really useful in combat as it states. Um, there's a whole, when we'll get to ship combat, ship to ship combat in a second year, in, a, in a, probably a future video, it's gonna be a video all its own because at first ship combat looked very confusing to me, but after reading it, I think I understand it. The The CPU or the computer is really good. There, there's going to be someone there who is a programmer. And you can program your own programs such as like evasions and auto-targeting. All these different programs that might be useful in combat. And a computer can store a certain amount of programs in it. And during combat, you're going to be cycling programs in and out of the computer essentially. It's very 70s sci-fi. Very 70s concept of sci-fi. Because, you know, obviously... They didn't know that we'd have the kinds of computers we have now back then. They didn't, they couldn't, they, when, when we do sci-fi, we're always taking the technology that we currently have and trying to imagine what that kind of technology would look like in the future. And that's what classic traveler is doing. You know, back then, uh, computers that would probably be on a ship were these massive things, these supercomputers that, uh, by our standards today are very archaic and so that's that's i mean you could change this if you want uh this this part about computers but i would probably keep it as is because i kind of like the 70s aesthetic as far as sci-fi sci and tech is concerned it's kind of fun to me it kind of reminds me of my childhood and the, and the movies and the films that i watched like i love star wars and star trek and and older trek and, and original trilogy star wars where the technology is like analog technology but in the future i think that that's just such a cool aesthetic to me it's it's its own 
version of, of future tech that I I find personally appealing. Maybe someone younger than me doesn't, but that's just me. Staterooms. Quarters for the crew and passengers are provided in the form of staterooms containing sleeping and living facilities. Each stateroom is sufficient for one person, displaces four tons, and costs uh, 500,000 credits. In some, in some starships, especially exploratory vessels, military ships, and privately owned starships, double occupancy is allowed in staterooms. No stateroom can contain more than two persons, however, as it would strain the ship's life support equipment. A commercial ship must have one stateroom for each member of the crew. Um, so no getting freaky in, in, in your rooms, people. Uh, you might you might kill everyone, or you might die in your in your room. That, is it worth it? Uh, low passage berths. Facilities for carrying passengers in cold sleep may be installed in a ship. One low passage berth carries one low passenger. Costs 50,000 credits and displaces one half ton. Low berths also serve well in emergencies in that they can provide suspended animation facilities for characters when medical care, rescue, or assistance is not immediately available. Uh, which Classic Traveler is extremely deadly as we, as we demonstrated in a previous video. You get shot once, you get hit once, that might be enough to incapacitate you. Your buddy's got to carry you back to the starship, put you in cryo, and, and hopefully they can uh, get, med get you medical attention in time. And so low, low passage berths might be a good use for that, as the rules here state. Emergency low berths are also available. They will not carry passengers, but can be used for survival. It costs 100,000 and displaces one ton. Each holds four persons who share the same revival die roll. But it's for emergencies only. Uh, fuel. Total fuel tankage for a ship must be indicated in the, sh in the design plans. There is no cost, but the capacity does influence how often the ship must refuel. At a minimum, a ship fuel tank must equal 0.1 uh, jump number plus 10 power plant number, I believe, where M is the tonnage of the ship. JN is the ship's jump number, and PN is the ship, ship power plant. Okay, our uh, power plant rate. Power plant fuel under the formula 10 p.m. allows a routine routine operations and maneuver for four weeks. Jump fuel under the formula uh, 0.1 mjn allows one jump of the of the stated level. Ships performing jumps less than their maximum capacity consume fuel at a lower level based on the jump number used. Cargo hold. The design plan must indicate cargo capacity. There is no cost, but cargo carried may not exceed cargo capacity. It makes sense. And finally, armaments. Any ship may have one hard point, so that's like a, an attachment point where upon which you can put missiles, sand, sandcasters, lasers, all kinds of stuff like that on the ship. Uh, designation of a hard point requires no tonnage and costs 100,000 credits. Hard points may be left unused if desired. So, you know, if your group can't is building a ship and they can't afford weapons, but they know that eventually they might be able to, they want weapons on their ship. They can pay to have the hard points put on the ship and then wait to hopefully they don't run into pirates or something like that and wait to hopefully get uh the weaponry that they want installed on their starship installed on it one turret may be attached to each hard point on the ship when it is attached one ton for fire control must be al allocated so uh you're gonna need to again plan out the tonnages of your ship this might be to me Starship design, if, a, if players want that, sounds like that's going to be a whole session to me where players feel like they're ready to design their own Starship and it's going to be a whole entire session devoted to figuring out the math and how to do this, which might not be for everyone uh, if they're doing a custom ship. If they're doing, this is why I think a lot of playgroups might go towards the standard design uh, ships because it's just, it's there and you have a cost for it. Um, Turrets and weapons may be altered or retrofitted. For example, a single turret can have its pulse laser replaced by a beam laser when it becomes available. A single turret can be replaced by a triple turret when it becomes available. Weapons for installation in turrets include pulse and beam lasers, missile racks, and sandcasters. All are used in space combat system described later in the book. So, yeah, in combat later, there's a whole, like, firing lasers, because obviously lasers are speed of light. So those are going to hit targets a lot sooner than, say, missiles will. Missiles are going to take time to get from point A to point B and, and hit if they do hit. Uh, sandcasters are very useful for uh, keeping yourself being hit from lasers. Uh, it creates like a screen through which lasers uh, will hopefully hit those. So, yeah. And then we got uh, optional components. You got atmospheric streamlining, which means the hulls 
uh, can can be useful in space, but then also uh, on plan in it within a planet's atmosphere. So you're going to need uh, essentially aerodynamics uh, ship's locker. Uh, every ship has a ship locker. The actual cost of much of the equipment within the locker is inconsequential when compared to the hull drive and drive costs for every ship minister. What is actually within the ship's locker based on the situation typical equipment carried aboard will include protective clothing, back suits, weapons such as shotguns or carbines, pistols, ammunition, compasses, and survival aids and portable shelters. Uh, and ship vehicles. You want maybe like an air raft or something like that, which is covered later in the book, or maybe like an APC of some kind. Um, you're going to need to crew your ship, and a lot of ships will tell you what kind of crew is required for each ship, especially in the uh, especially in in the the already designed ships. Like if you have a scout courier or a free trader or something like that, it will tell you. You need a pilot, an engineer, and a medic, for instance. And then if you have guns installed, you're going to need a gunner. So you're going to need a pilot in, in most ships. Each starship and non-starship requires a pilot who must have at least pilot one skill. Small craft require a pilot who must have at least ship, ship's boat one. So uh, ship's boat one, for instance, I think would be useful. Like So small craft would be like a fighter. So you're not going to use uh, pilot skill for the fighter going to use ship's boat or like a shuttle um, that maybe takes people from uh, a starport up in orbit down to the planet you're, you're going to probably need ship's boat or one that goes between like a moon and, and, uh, a, and a space station or something like that you're going to need ship boat engineer any ship with a tonnage 200 ton, with tonnage 200 tons or more must have one engineer with minimum engineer one skill for 35 tons of drive and power plant. If there is more than one engineer, then the most skilled or the oldest becomes chief engineer with 10% more pay. Ooh. Ships under 200 tons and small craft do not require an engineer, although engineering skill may prove useful. Steward. If high passengers are carried, then a steward is required. There must be at least one steward, steward skill zero or better, uh, per eight high passengers on the ship. If there is more than one steward, the most skilled is designated chief steward or purser and draws 10 percent more salary <coughs> medic each starship of 200 tons or more must have a medic medic one skill or better in addition there must be at least one medic per 120 passengers carried if there is more than one medic the most skilled is designated the ship's doctor and draws 10 percent more pay non starships and small craft do not require medics and a gunner one gunner, gunnery skill one or better required, may be hired per turret on a ship. So you have two turrets on your ship, you're going to need two gunners. Uh, armed small craft require a gunner in addition to the pilot. If there is more than one gunner, the most skilled is designated the chief, in, chief gunner and draws 10% more pay. The gunner position may be omitted if there is no major threat to the ship. I would just have a gunner. <laughs> That's my view. Uh, one person may fill two crew positions, providing... He or she has the skill to otherwise perform the work. However, because of the added burden, each position is filled with skill minus one, and the individual draws salary equal to 75% of each position. Thus, thus, to fill two positions, the character must have at least skill level two in each, except steward level one. Uh, it's hard to pull double duty. Uh, other crew positions may be created dependent on the facilities of the starship. Blah, 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 blah. Let's get into weapons that may be on your ship pulse lasers they fire short bursts of energy at targets beam lasers fire continuous beam of energy at targets so you know you're going to be and it's just going to be a straight line at the target pulse lasers are more like what you'd see in star wars you know like out of shooting out of a star destroyer it's just like a, a thin beam of energy flying at a at a target missile racks are launchers for an, uh, small anti-ship missiles the typical missile is a homing type which constantly seeks the target ship, ultimately being destroyed by the target's defenses or exploding and doing damage to it. Such missiles also may be converted to planetary surface bombs or to surveillance drones, which is cool. Mechanical and electronic skills should apply in such cases. Individual missiles weigh about 50 kilograms and cost 5,000 credits each. Sandcasters are defensive weapons. They dispense small particles which counter the strength of lasers and protect the ship. The specific particles used are similar to Ablat personal armor. Uh, replacement canisters of this special sand weigh about 50 kilograms and cost 400 credits. 
So then we get into to the small craft here. And you know, I don't think I'm gonna cover this uh exactly. We'll just we'll just go over real quickly like what kinds of ships are available because I feel like this this video is already 30 minutes long or so and it's already too long. Uh let's see. Yeah, we'll just go through it. Might as well. All right. So you have different options for for ships. This is what I'm talking about. Why most players are probably going to go this route because it's just cheaper and easier. And unless they're really interested in designing their own ship, um, I think Mark Miller was smart enough to provide these ready-made ships that you don't have to think too much about. So these are small ships. These are not going to be able to do jumps or anything like that, but they could be carried, for instance, maybe on a larger interstellar vessel of some kind. You have launch, or also called a lifeboat, using 20-ton hull. Launch is capable of 1G acceleration and can carry and carries one ton of fuel tankage and has a crew of two. A launch may mount missile racks and sandcasters. It may, it may not mount lasers as weapons. So the craft has 13 tons excess space available for custom use and cost MCR 14. Use that as an escape pod ship's boat. It's a 30 ton, uh, capable of 6G acceleration, carries 1.8 tons of fuel. Uh, you can mount weapons on this one as well. You have a slow boat, it's another 30 ton ship. Has 3G acceleration, carries 1 ton of fuel, and has a crew of two. A slow boat may mount one beam or pulse laser. Remaining weapons must be missile racks or sandcasters. Craft has 19.9 tons of excess space and costs MCR 15. Panace. Using a 40 ton hull, has capable of 5G acceleration, carries 2 tons of fuel, has a crew of 2, it may mount 2 lasers, and any remaining weapons must be missile racks and sand, or sandcasters, and it has 22.4 tons of excess space, and costs 20 MCR. So, uh, that's 20 million credits right there, that's a lot of, uh, that's a lot of money. You can see even these small ships are very expensive. You can imagine what bigger ships are going to be. Uh, slow pinnace, uh using a 40 ton hull. The slow pinnace is pe penis. <laughs> uh, I don't even know if I'm saying it right. I should look at it. I should have looked it up before I tried to pronounce it. Uh, it is capable of 2G acceleration, carries one ton of fuel, and has a crew of two. I mean, mount one beam or pulse laser. Uh, has 31.6 tons and MCR 18. Cutter, the 50 ton ship, 4G acceleration, carries 2 tons of fuel, has a crew of 2, has 30 tons committed to special detachable modules, it has 2.5 tons of excess space available for weaponry computer, and maybe a couch for a third crew member. Cutter may mount up to 2 lasers, remaining weapons must be missile racks and or sandcasters. The cutter without any modules costs 28 MCR. And uh, 3 modules are routinely available for the cutter, the ATV module, which Includes either a wheeled or tracked ATV. Uh, mass is 30 tons, you can, so you can get an ATV, the fuel module, and the open module is customizable frame, 30 tons of excess space, uh, which can be allocated to cou passenger couches, fuel, cargo cabins, or staterooms. It costs MCR2. You have a shuttle, it's a 95 ton ship, 3G acceleration, has 71 tons of excess space, MCR33, has a crew of two. And a fighter use, has a 10 ton hull, so this is a much smaller ship. The fighter is very fast at 6G, carries one ton of fuel, and has a crew of one. It includes computer model one and can mount only one type of weapon one laser, up to three missile racks, or up to three sandcasters. It has one ton of excess space and costs MCR 18. That's clearly meant just for space combat. Um, then you get into standard ship design plans. You have the Scout Courier, which is again that triangle ship, 100 ton hull. Uh, you can see that this one is 29.43 uh, uh, MCR and takes nine months to build. Free Trader, 200 ton ship, so double the size of the Scout Courier, 37.8 uh, uh, MCR and 11 months to build. And this again tells you, where does it tell you the crew? Uh, those are the jump drive, maneuver drive, and power plant. Uh, jump one, one G acceleration. Uh, no turrets. Okay, usually here at the end. The free trader requires a crew of four, a 
pilot, an engineer, medic, and steward. Gunners may be carried if the ship is armed. So, this see, this is why this is nice, and I'm glad that this is in this book, because you have, like, the subsidized merchant, subsidized liner, a yacht, mercenary cruiser, patrol cruiser, and it kind of tells you exactly what the players need in order to own and operate this ship. How much it's going to cost, which will tell you how much it is going to uh, cost to finance it. Um, and or you, if it's a used ship, how much to reduce the price by based on how old it is. So which, which is quite nice as far as uh, uh, the math is concerned for, for figuring out the finances for the ship. I feel like after Classic Traveler, you should just be able to get a job like at a financial planning company or um, at a bank <laughs> as a loan officer, because uh, that's what you're doing here. Um, so we got building ships. You can uh, give, it gives you rules here for custom ships, custom hulls. Uh, kind of goes back over what we already talked about for him, talked about here. Uh, one and then more rules here. And then we get back to this stuff here, which we've already covered, and um, you got a design checklist here, which is nice. It had this for uh, character creation, and I really appreciate that this, it's what makes it feel a little more user-friendly uh, as far as rules are concerned, because it does give you an example of essentially like a checklist of like, did you do all these things? Which if the players want to build their own ship, you have this starship design checklist and can be like, did you do all of these things? Uh, so that we are doing this properly. Uh, Travelers Aid Society Form 3, which is uh, this form here, which kind of shows uh, ship information and uh, what what kind of stuff your ship has as far as computer programs <clears throat> and um, additional information. So next video will be space combat. Uh, that'll be fun. Uh, use, use a lot of vectors in space combat. Sounds complicated, but it, I don't really think it's all that difficult. So that's going to do it for this video. Um, hope you enjoyed my rambling explaining how starships are made in Classic Traveler and how they're financed and all that kind of stuff. Uh, it's it's a fun system. Um, there's a lot of different ways that you can give players starships. So you know you could give them you could give them a, a subsidized ship maybe from the government or a corporation. And have them kind of go on as a rule state kind of go on a, a set trade route you know where they're going from point a to point b to point c to point d and then back to point a maybe like in a loop and they just do this loop as they as they go around and that could get maybe kind of boring you could maybe start an adventure that way and have it spin off into something else so for instance you know if it's a government subsidized ship uh they have the right to call you into service you and your ship into service if they are needed so you could have the players like go off on their adventure on their trade route maybe once or twice or not even finish it once and then all of a sudden the military calls we need your ship we need your help uh for some operation or something like that which can lead to another adventure of some kind you know um you could have them purchase a used ship which will be cheaper or if the ships, if the players are rolling in the dough, you can help them. Uh, you you can they can build their own custom ship. Uh, there is one tool I want to talk about, which is very useful. Uh, if I could find it, uh, here we go. If you are going to design your own starships, this starship geomorphs. Uh, PDF, which you can get it for free on, uh, I believe, Far Future Enterprises, Mark Miller's website. He has this as a PDF for free. This thing is awesome, and you get a ton of geomorphs of ships uh, that you can use to customize like a layout for a ship. You get uh, already made stuff here but then you also if we scroll down um, you get examples of well that that's cool there uh, that's cool there you get these geomorphs here which you can connect together for much larger ships uh, that are are so multi-purpose research deck cargo bays uh, fighter hangar crew area engineering sensors sensor ops 
Um, the art is interesting. I feel like it's like Google SketchUp 3D models. Uh, prisons, fuel deck, uh, arbitorium, arbitor, arbitor, arbor, ugh, I can't even say that word. I'm stupid. Engineering. So you you can see you got a lot of these things, and you have lots of ways to connect them together to make your starship. And you know you got uh, examples here. It's really cool. Uh, met, lower lower low berth deck. Uh, so you got medical, and then this is where everyone would be in in frozen in cryo uh, as as you travel. Hopefully they don't die. Um, engineering decks. You got lots of stuff. And again, this this PDF is available for free. I believe on the Far Future Enterprise website. It's absolutely fantastic. I highly recommend this. Um, very 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 useful for what we're talking about here. So that is building ships within traveler next video will be space combat thank you for watching hopefully it wasn't too boring as you watched me bumble through this um, i'm learning a lot about this as we go too because uh i've been running a few games of classic traveler and i'm really having a lot of fun with it and i, I not that i think traveler is an underrated game especially classic traveler but man it is such a cool fun game and i don't i know some modern gamers see an attack matrix or uh, they look at just like there's no illustrations really in this in these books uh, and that can turn them off to the to a really good game and that's unfortunate so i really hope that uh, these videos get out there and at least maybe get some people interested in checking out classic traveler i mean you can get the the imprint book and the pdf so cheap on drive through rpg or you can get almost everything on a cd-rom from mark miller's website on far future i'll have a link to that in the video description i haven't been linking to that uh but i should um and maybe if you're nice uh mark miller will send it to you on a thumb drive who knows um or get a cd-rom i don't know but classic traveler is great um you can have a lot of fun with like merchant style adventures and uh that could turn into more stuff um and i in classic traveler and I'll end on this. The reason why I love it so much is that it really plays to the sandbox style game that I love to run, where you're given lots of tables on what kind of cargo is available for the players to get from point A to point B, what kind of passengers, what happens on the journey to pirates attack? Is there a hi an attempted hijacking? Is there uh, uh, what what happens when they land at their location is there going to be an encounter with uh tariffs and some lo local law enforcement once they get down on planet what kind of creatures live there and you can randomly roll to see what kind of creatures will they be will they encounter and what kind of people and what distance and are they friendly are they not friendly it really plays to this idea that i can go into a, a traveler session with absolutely zero prep and the game will be fun still. And I love that, especially as the dad of a two-year-old with not much time. I love games like that. And I think that's why, for instance, I left 5e for the OSR because the OSR is a lot like that too, where lots of random table rolls, rolling dice and making stuff up is my preferred way to play. And Classic Traveler really, really caters to that. That doesn't mean you couldn't run a very like module-like or... I don't want to say railroad but giving trying to bait the players with very clear motivation that doesn't mean you can't do that but you could really go in and just let the players do whatever they want and the rules will will support you and help you to run a game run that kind of game so i really hope you check it out uh check out my subscribe star if you're interested in doing that check out cow punchers on drive through rpg or uh lulu um and uh yeah hope you have a good day Check out Classic Traveler. Talk to you guys later. Peace out.